In this video, we're going to go whole hog, soup to nuts, the whole nine yards. We're going to report on some SharePoint list data. I have an expense list. Notice that we take expenses and we categorize them. We also have an expense date and an expense amount. And we've also created an expense budgets list that has the budget for every intersection of year, quarter, and expense category. And the idea is that the budgets and the expenses are all maintained in SharePoint lists. Okay, great. Let's go to Power BI Desktop. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start importing data. So we pick SharePoint online list. Now I take the URL from the site and we put it inside there. The first time I connect, it's going to make me authenticate. We're going to use the organizational account. So I put in my Power BI or my Office 365 user account credentials. And now we connected and now it's going to cache those credentials on my desktop machine. Now notice that when I go to the navigator, it shows me every single list, whether they're hidden or not. Now I'm going to grab the expenses list. Notice that you also have to pick what columns, and there's a whole bunch of yucky low-level columns that SharePoint doesn't mean to show you, but Power BI Desktop doesn't really uh, understand the uh, hidden equals true characteristic. Okay, so I create this first query, and after picking what I want, I kind of take a look at the query. It looks good, but what I want to do is I want to run a quick test. I'm going to use a tool called Fiddler that shows me how Power BI Desktop is getting the information. What I observe is that it's using the new SharePoint REST API introduced in SharePoint 2013 with underscore API web. But I also notice it's bringing back every single column from the SharePoint server. It doesn't do what's called column folding. If I want column folding, where it only pulls across the columns that I want, there's a trick, and that is I switch the API version in the SharePoint.tables call in M. When I switch the API version from 15 to 14, it starts using the older SharePoint REST API listData.svc that was introduced in SharePoint 2010. Now, some things are going to break, so you're going to have to get rid of some steps and add in the new steps. In short, when you use the API version 15, it picks up the GUID dependency on the list. When you use 14, it picks up the text value of the list caption. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick the exact columns that I want. Note that the way that the columns show up are going to be different in 14 and 15. However, all those differences are hidden inside the query. By the time the query runs and dumps the table into the data model, you can't tell whether it came from the version 14 or version 15 or SQL Server or any other data source. Okay, now I'm just going to finish up editing this query right here. We'll go ahead and run the query. And now let's go ahead and test it out back in Fiddler. We'll go ahead and we'll refresh it. And this time, because we're using API version 14, you can see it's calling into list data to SVC. And what's key is it's using the odata dollar sign select to only pull back the columns that we want. And so now I feel much better about my place on the earth now that I'm not dragging unnecessary columns across the network. Now that I've created the query to one SharePoint list, let's create the query to the other one, expense budgets. And now because we want to switch over to 14, you have to kind of go through this fire drill where you create it and then get rid of the columns it created for 15. You create your own columns. And now once we've done that and we pretty up our uh, column names inside here. Yes, I love those spaces. Let's go ahead and add those inside there. Maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, conversion. And now we'll go ahead and we'll run it. And so now we have two different tables in our data model. Now I want to create a relationship, but one problem that we have is that there's not a single field in each table that we can create the relationship based on. So I'm going to create a couple calculated columns. First one I'll create is budget period, which is going to be the year, a hyphen, and then the quarter. And then we're going to create a second one, which is going to be the budget key. And the idea is that this combines the budget year and in addition to the budget year, it has the quarter and then it has the expense category. And I can create the same calculated column in both of these tables. And the idea is that once I create this pair of calculated columns, I can then create the relationship between these two tables based on that calculated column. Okay, now that I've done that, now we're in the home stretch. Let's go ahead and start building out our report. So we'll go ahead and I'll add a matrix and we'll have budget period and expense category put inside there. Let's go ahead and pretty up our uh, report by using a style on the matrix. Now let's go ahead and create some measures. First one, obvious, total expenses. So we want to take the expense amounts and total them up. We'll go ahead and put some pretty formatted in place and we'll go ahead and we'll add that 
into our matrix. Now, the second thing I want is to create the budget amount. So here, I'm gonna use a very simple technique where we're simply summing the budget amount. And because I'm only gonna use this measure in an area where I know the filtering is correct, I know that this will work. Now I'll create the measure I really care about, budget use, which is total expense divided by budget. So we basically see where we've gone over budget. We format it as a percentage and anything over 100% is a problem because we've gone over budget. Now, the other trick is we'll go to this percentage column and we'll use some conditional formatting so the things that are over their budget show up in red. Okay, now just a couple more visual pieces right here. Let's go ahead and we'll create a column chart. And with this particular column chart, we want to basically show things spread out by expense category. I'll create a second chart. This one will be a bar chart. And what we'll do here is we'll just kind of look at things a little bit differently, but now we'll see, uh, I'll create a constant line for the percentage where it's 100 so we can see what things have gone over their budget. And then one more, we'll create a line chart and into access, I'm going to drop the date and then I'm going to use kind of the neat feature where they build out the date hierarchy so I can pick month inside there. Okay, so now we've got a basic report that looks fairly decent. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our report and we're going to publish it back to my personal workspace. If this demo is really going to be whole hog soup and nuts the whole nine yards, we have to use the SharePoint web part for Power BI. In order to do that, someone has to go into the Office 365 admin and go to our organizational profile and set early release for everyone. Once you do that, you wait about 60 minutes and what you're going to see is that the new web part will show up. Now I'm going to create a page under the new experience. And what's important is that this is not a classic web part. It is, there it is, Power BI preview. So we add the web part, but now to configure the web part, we have to go back to the Power BI report and pick embed in SharePoint online. This gives me a URL I can copy. Let's go back to SharePoint to our new age web part. We'll go ahead and paste that link in and notice that it lets me pick the page. My report only has one page, so I'm going to say no navigation. However, if we had multiple pages, you could select navigation. Now we'll go ahead and add the web part inside there. We'll go ahead and save our work inside and things are good. Okay, so now that we see that things are working, let's think about ongoing. How are we going to maintain and refresh the data? So here's our first problem. And that is when we put in the particle accelerator, we forgot to add one zero. We put 1200, but now it's 12,000. We've updated it, but now we've somehow got to refresh the data inside there. So I'm going to go back to the Power BI workspace, my personal workspace. We're going to go to our data set and we're going to edit the credentials. I'm going to pick OAuth 2. And so now separately, after I edited credentials for use on my desktop, we're going to edit credentials on the server so that we can run server-side refreshes. If I wanted to schedule things, that's great. Notice that we go ahead and we run the refresh. And now Power BI is just pulling data right out of SharePoint without me even being involved. I can see the refresh history. We go back and we take a look at the report. Yep, there is that fourth quarter expense. We go back here in SharePoint. And if everything's good, we should basically be able to see things in our brand new report. And there it is, that fourth quarter expense for the particle accelerator. Ouch.